It's Friday the 11th of March, end of the week, end of a volatile week, a uh, surprising week for me if I'm honest. Uh, the beginning of the week, I've just done a, a video on the US stock markets actually, so if you haven't watched it, please watch it, really interesting if you're, inter if you're looking at the stock markets, following them, trading them, whatever. Um, so I'm now going to focus on the DAX, the Euro stocks and the FTSE. So if you're trading European stock markets, this is the one for you. Um, Okay, beginning of the week, I, I identified this as a very, very big support level. And I actually thought that we would end the correction, bounce off here, see a good recovery this week. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the sort of 13,200, 13,000 area. On the weekly chart, good Fibonacci support down there, 200 week moving average. That to me looked good enough. We, we ended last week bang on uh, 13,113, which ironically, is the almost exact price within one tick of my 38.2% um, Fibonacci level here on the weekly chart. I actually went long uh, over the weekend, thought I was um, doing brilliantly. So I was very surprised to see the market open uh, lower on Monday and then trade down all the way down here. So I had to get out of my, my long position and then I reversed into a short position on the bounce back up here and got completely caught. So I got done both ways. Um, the, the, the bounce did come but not as I had expected. So I, I have been caught out and it really did, um, it really threw me. So I've, I've, I've had to now get my thoughts together and try and figure out what's going on with the DAX because I, I don't even know why we bottomed out here at, at 12,425. That to me doesn't look like anything significant at all. I've been through my charts and I just can't see why that was, uh, that turned into being a support level. Anyway, it did. Now, since then, I've managed to get, get things back on track just using the Fibonacci levels, moving averages, the trend lines are not really any use to me at all at the moment because the move down was so severe and we did catch that move to the downside, at least down to 13,000. Um, I, I, uh, I did, as you know, if you're a subscriber, um, suggest that that would happen and we, we were getting in um, to sell uh, short positions on, on each bounce. So that worked really well, but as I say, got thrown here. Now, um, since then, Fibonacci levels are working quite well. Support around 13,300, that's doing all right. In fact, we bounced off uh, 13,270 just now. Uh, we've got resistance still at that sort of 750, 850 area. Where did we get to yesterday? I think we got to like, okay, 989. I actually revised that level up to, I think, um, a little bit. Anyway, just, to, to, just because the FIB level is 13,895. So of course, that is the area where we're gonna be looking for resistance. We held below the 500 day moving average, which is just below Sorry, just above 14,000, well, 14,079 to be exact. Um, I was looking at the moving average crossovers in the US markets, worth noting here, although there's a difference because in the US stock markets, we've been going up for a long time, all the way up until the end of December. It was just up, 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 up. When you look at the European markets, it was sideways, sideways, sideways. I mean, European markets, or DAX at least, has been going sideways since at least April of last year. So we're getting on for a, we were, well, that was a, that's a year ago. Uh, and then we only started to collapse around the middle of February. So it was a heck of a long time of sideways moving action. And of course, I did identify not only the double top, but also the head and shoulders pattern, which when we broke the, the neckline at around 14,800, that was the trigger for a big move to the downside. And of course, we got it. So the technicals have been working really perfectly, actually, and not hard to interpret them. A double top is plain to everyone. A head and shoulders pattern is plain to most people, although I'm surprised at how many people get it wrong on Twitter. Um, a head and shoulders pattern is only valid at the peak of a very, um, of an extended bear trend, of a significant bear trend. I see people see it, talking about head and shoulders patterns after the, mar the market's already declined, and then they see this pattern, and I'm just like, I wanna bang my head against the wall. Uh, it's not relevant. And uh, it, you know, if the market had only gone up from say here, 13,300, and then you've got this big pattern. It's not relevant. This big pattern is massively relevant only because it's at the top of a huge upswing from this COVID um, situation. That, that, that tells you that this is relevant and, and it's, um, what's the word? Um, it fits in with, with, with that whole move up. Um, you know, as I say, if it started moving up from here, then it wouldn't be relevant. Anyway, um, if you're not sure, I've got um, tutorials on head and shoulders patterns in my um, playlist, so please do have a look for them. So what now? I think that stock markets are going to stabilise. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see if the DAX continues to stabilise from sort of 13,200 up to 13,800 to 13,900. We, we might trade sideways in that range 
all through next week. Um, I'm going to post my analysis in the description box below. So if you want to get the levels, um, if, you, if you're scalping or swing trading, then have a look there. I won't go into them in any more detail here, but I, I will tell you that I'm basing them mostly on Fibonacci levels because the move down was so swift that the, that the um, moving averages are no use to me at all on the daily chart. And really, there's no trend line that, you know, any trend line would be so steep as to make it not relevant either. So it really is just looking at candle formations, patterns, uh, Fibonacci levels, uh, and previous price action where the swing highs and swing lows are. For the big levels, the four hour chart is also worth a look. Um, I've, I've encompassed the whole of the move down from the beginning of January here for the Eurostox. This is the Eurostox um, uh, 50 four hour chart. And look, you can see how the Fibonacci levels are working quite well. Before we'd even bottomed, you know, obviously the mark, I didn't know where we were going to bottom, um, although I can show you some support levels. And, and, and look how nicely these levels, these swing highs and lows, match up with the Fibonacci levels when you put them on. So if we were to get up to the 61.8 at around 4,000, 4, you know, you, you would be looking at these swing lows and thinking, well, that really is a strong level because the swing lows match the Fib, fib levels. Anyway, for now, the 38.2% fib at around 37.60, 37.80, that's working. I had that level on my report yesterday. If you sold there, if you're a subscriber, you've done well. Uh, support down here at 36.20, 36.10, well, we went straight to it. So an easy, uh, what's that, 150 odd pips, 150 odd ticks, very quick. And we've held that support level. So longs here are doing well as we recover. And now, same theme. My theme really is that I think we're gonna start to trade sideways into next week. You know, we've had, um, Two, two weeks of war, is it getting on for three weeks of war? I think we're settling into that now. Maybe that's the wrong term in, in such uh, horrific, um, with such horrific conditions going on in the Ukraine. Uh, but financial markets are settling into it, put it that way. I don't think there's anything that can come out of this situation that's going to be particularly new for now, um, as long as Putin doesn't press the nuclear button. Uh, so I think, you know, we're going to, we're, we're setting ourselves in for a, a prolonged war, prolonged situation because the Ukrainian uh, resistance is doing quite well. And I think for that reason, fundamental and also for technical reasons, I think that these stock markets could consolidate and it's going to turn into a scalper's market rather than selling into uh, short positions on the bounce, which is the strategy we have been using very successfully. But now I'm going to be switching to probably more of a scalping strategy. It'll be nice because the range is going to be wide. 150 uh, pip scalps in Euro stocks. Everyone's going to be happy with that. We haven't seen that for a very long time. Anyway, Back, let's have a quick look at the weekly chart just in case I'm missing anything. There we go, there was your big support level. No surprise. Uh, I didn't understand why the DAX uh, bottomed at that level, 13,425, but I know exactly why the Eurostox bottomed because that was the big 38.2% fib when you go all the way back to 2009. That, uh, that low there in the Eurostox, you take that and you've got, you got 4,000 basically bang on, 33.95 as your big 38.2% fib. So no surprise at all that we bottomed there. And that clearly was um, maybe a factor in why the DAX bounced as well. And, and um, so those are the levels for now. Big resistance up around 30, 37,080, 3,800, uh, sorry. 3,700, um, 3,780, 3,800. Why can I not get that, not get that number out of my mouth? Um, so even if on the grand scale of things in your swing trading, uh, you want to job, you know, it's called jobbing, jobbing in the old days. Scalping is what they call it these days from sort of 4,000 up to, um, sorry, from um, 3,400 up to 3,750. That still would be a nice strategy for next week. And I think that's the one that's going to work. FTSE is more of a confusing picture, I'll be honest, and it has been for a while. I don't find this one as easy to read as I find the DAX and the Eurostox. So those are the ones that I tend to trade myself. But having said that, there are some de decent levels to look out for here. Look how we're testing this trend line going back to the beginning of 2021 and the 50 week moving average. We peaked above it, but we don't seem to be um, rocketing through. So that's interesting to see if sort of 71, uh, 50, 71, 70 area holds. Uh, I'm just going to quickly look at the daily chart. Again, fib levels on there are actually working pretty well. The 50% fib certainly holding. Uh, on the downside, we've got um, support at the 23.6% fib. Even the 38.2 at around 70, 70 is doing its thing. I don't have a very clear idea on the FTSE, so I'm not going to go on about it today. But I am going to post the, um, the full analysis that I write for my subscribers in the description box. So you can follow that 
if you're trading it and I hope that will be useful to you. Uh, yeah, please send me some comments, please like, please share, uh, please subscribe so that you get a notification of when I do release these videos if you find them useful. Um, and uh, yeah, if you've got uh, questions in the comments box, I'm always uh, happy to try to help you and please visit my website, daytradeideas.co.uk. But if you Google me, Jason Sen, S-E-N, you'll find lots of stuff on me and um, hopefully uh, I can help you along. Uh, Free stuff is always on uh, FX Street, um, investing.com. I've been posting stuff on there for about 10 years. So um, loads of free stuff out there. Okay, thanks very much. Have a great weekend. Good luck if you're trading this afternoon. It's, uh, what is it? 5 p.m. in Thailand. That's where I live in Phuket. I'm not trading anymore. I'm going to hit the beach. Have a great weekend.